to our channel. I'm so excited for today's video because I feel like it will kind of start the direction of the channel. Hopefully, if you guys enjoy this. So, if you do, make sure you leave a thumbs up. I'm so out of breath. I just ran upstairs. Um, so, hopefully, you guys give it a thumbs up and you guys do enjoy this type of content because I'm hoping to kind of gear our channel in this direction. So, today, by the title, you can tell we're going to be talking about. I don't know what I was going to say. But we're going to talk about how we got to the decision of homeschooling and what brought us there and kind of what happened in the public school system and I'm gonna start by saying nothing crazy happened um if you guys know my oldest King and follow his crazy pregnancy and birth story you would know he was born early so as we got into the public school system we got to some hurdles and experiences that kind of led us to make the decision of what would be best for him um and i'm gonna start by saying that there was nothing wrong with the school system like we didn't have any like horrible experiences it was just things that came up like came up that we realized like okay that kind of setting isn't for him or the way they're doing this um he's not understanding so maybe like sitting down with him will really benefit um so we're just going to discuss a few different reasons why i have some little notes on my ipad that i wrote down that i will be reading off of so um first i'm going to start with the fact that i don't think i've ever acknowledged it or like put it out there to anyone that king is autistic um and what that looks like for us we believe he has asperger's if you don't know what that is you can do your own research on it um but what it looks like for us with king is that like there's not a lot of eye contact he really hyper focuses on just like the things he's interested in um you know there's a comprehension issue there and just a lot of sensory <laughs> sensory needs that he has um but that's really it. I mean, we haven't came across like major things. He's super high functioning. Um, Asperger's is part of this autism spectrum. Um, but like I said, he's very high functioning. He eats by himself and he could do a lot by himself. It's literally just the communication part that uh, he struggles with. So um, we are in the process of trying to get him diagnosed which has been the hardest part so far so we've gotten him evaluated about two weeks ago and um they did say like they think he like meets that you know not requirement but like those traits that he has that do identify with autism um and again we're not sure i've had his kindergarten teacher at in public school told me she thinks he's a savant because his memory is strange if you hear music in the background that's king watching his game um so his memory is phenomenal you tell him something one time maybe twice and it's it's locked in there for for good um so you know she thinks that his speech therapist says oh he He's like, you know, her husband who is full functioning and has Asperger's and he's an electrical engineer. And she says, like, I see him, you know, following a lot of those traits. And she thinks he's a prodigy child, you know. So it's it's different depending on who you ask. For us, it's just we're learning all of this. Um, so we did um, take him to get evaluated and we are waiting to get a... Um, full diagnosis done um but again he's full functioning he talks it's just like in-depth conversation that a typical five six year old would be having he does he's not there yet so there is a like speech delay and a comprehension issue there which kind of led us to learning these things within the school system and how it affected him in school so the first issue we had was that he did go to a public school that we live right next door to 
and he enjoyed it he loves school he loves routine he thrives off of routine like he he'll tell you like first this check then this check and he he has it down to a t um what the problem was for him in that first school was that you're in a classroom with 25 26 other kids and he had sensory things that he wanted to do like he liked to sit on the floor and feel the rug and not do anything crazy but he just wanted to sit there and like that's what he wanted to learn but you're in a classroom with 20 something other kids who don't understand that and they're all sitting at their desk doing their work and king was like no i want to sit on the floor and you know enjoy this feeling <laughs> and um obviously he couldn't do that there so that became like an issue between you know talking to teachers like well he doesn't say seated and then like the school work he was really bored with school um because he is really really smart he is like a grade i would say even two grade levels ahead of where he at but you know i don't you know obviously he doesn't know everything that you would learn in a second grade classroom so i do say like he's in a first grade level which he is now entering first grade but he's already been at that first grade level when it comes to, like reading and math um so he did have a hard time sitting down and like staying quiet in school because the work was just easy like he would do it really fast and then he would want to sit on the floor and talk to himself Whereas like no in school it's like you can't you have to sit you're done you have to like sit down and be quiet and wait for everybody else to finish and you know which is understandable you're in a classroom setting that's kind of the rules that go with that um, again which led us to think okay a classroom setting isn't the best scenario for him because you know it's one teacher trying to teach a curriculum to 30 kids the same exact way and expect everyone to get it within the week and then move on to the next thing whereas some kids don't learn that fast some kids have different ways of learning whether it's you know kinetic visual audio they have different ways of learning and king really was hindering in that section of like his way of learning is different than his other classmates and that's what autism is is just they have a different way of thinking and processing things um so that was like our first issue because he would go to school and i would have no clue how the school day went like i would ask him like did you have fun and he answers yes or no questions but you know you want your kid to tell you know we're starting this new journey of your school career your education journey and you know it's a long one so going into kindergarten, already having those issues of like, I can't even ask him how his day was and what happened, if things are okay, if your friends are being nice, did anything bad happen? He couldn't tell me those things because he just, he's not there yet with his speech to just speak in full story. Um, he just speaks in like shorter sentences. And so that for a parent is scary to send your kid to be cared for for eight hours and then get no you do have no clue what happened in those eight hours like that's scary for a parent um so that's kind of like was our first big like okay we need a lot of communication with the teacher which then was like hard for her because it's just one teacher in a room full of 20 something 30 kids and you know and i do understand the teacher side of it like i am asking a lot for her as she has to care for 30 kids um to just specifically give me notes on like what happened with my kid and so yeah and what i was asking a lot and some moms would say like that's not asking a lot and they should be doing that but i am very considerate of the school system because like my mom was a teacher and i wanted to be a teacher at one point so i understand like it's hard to stretch yourself for 30 people and then like have one that you need to directly have eyes on at all times um you know and then i understood that so i didn't hold anything against her so like i said it wasn't a bad experience it was just worrisome as a parent um like the next thing was that he thinks he's in his head 
Uh, even when he's sleeping, he's talking to himself in his head. Like he's he's just on go 24-7. And that is a distraction for him. Um, because he's not paying attention where he's going, what he's doing. He's just kind of moving where everyone else is moving. And so that led like he needed to have a teacher with him 24-7 as I'd walk him to school. There would be a teacher waiting there at the gate for him to bring him to class because they didn't feel safe letting him go by himself which is understandable and i love that and i was thankful for that and it made me feel good um but then it was just like you know we would have these meetings he does have an iep for school as like a just a developmental delay and it was like they didn't have enough resources for him um you know, he saw a speech therapist and he did all these things, but it was like, from what the school said, they just didn't have enough resources, which, you know, it sucks to hear as a parent coming from a school that we wanted him to go to. Um, but they were very, very helpful in our transition. He had a team of like 11 teachers uh, that helped him throughout the, like the month and a half that he was at the school. Um, so it was an easy transition it was just big for us as a parents because now they wanted us to tra transition to the second school is where he ended up going for the rest of the school year which was they placed him into a special ed classroom and he would take the bus to school because it was about 10 minutes away which now that is a whole nother journey of getting him onto a school bus and feeling scary about the school bus but you know, we got through it, he pushed through it, he liked going on the school bus, um, never had any issues with that. Where we came to at this new school was that, you know, he was in the special ed classroom, but since he was so good at reading and math, they did push him out into a regular kindergarten classroom um, to do language arts. And then they did push him out to a regular classroom to do math. And then they pushed him out at lunch in recess with regular classes so he only spent like free time and like maybe school specials like gym and art and those things um with the special ed class and he did great there he thrived he did schoolwork he learned so much and he even started talking a lot more because he would also do speech and physical therapy at school as well as what we do on our regular weekly basis so he thought he enjoyed it um what became more like aware to us was that he was doing things that one word just really easy like when we would get his schoolwork home we would see like man this is, no wonder he's bored like this is what they're doing at school like we did these worksheets at two three years old and so for him it was just like i wanted to push him more he is so smart and every even his teacher his kindergarten teacher the one who said like she thinks he's a savant he would just say like he's so smart he just doesn't care to interact with any of the other kids he just wants to do his schoolwork he likes the strike he did not like free time he liked being busy and having work to do to keep him busy and then it's like when he's done with that work he just wants to be done with school and you know as a parent i just felt like who can teach my son better than me when i know him the best um and you know so those things led us to uh, even just started questioning it a lot of um another big thing was that um his health king has a like a weak immune system he gets sick very easily um and at school and it's hard to tell a story because it's like i don't know if half of it's real or half of it's not but he would always get sick and with covid you cough three times in a row and it's like eh, you should probably stay home tomorrow and that's what kept happening he would get coughs because he his allergies are extremely bad and especially in the hotter seasons and like it just gets really bad so once spring came along we were missing so much school and i'm telling you like we would get a call on monday like hey he has a cough you have to come pick him up then we would have to stay home for a day or two. Then we'd go back Thursday or Friday and he would finish the school week. 
Then Monday it would come around and I was like, oh, well, his eye is really swollen. He might have pink eyes, so you need to come get him. And then we have to stay home for a whole week when it was never pink eye. He just has allergies and his eyes would get red. He would rub them and they would get swollen. And then it got to a point where King knew that he would go home from these things. And this is where the turning point becomes like, he's doing this on purpose. So he would rub his eye until it got swollen and then he would have to go home. But the thing is with King, how I knew he was doing it on purpose was on Monday after school, he would come home from school and tell me, no school tomorrow. And then I'm like, yeah, baby, you got school tomorrow. It's Tuesday. And then, you know, you're almost done with your week. We got to get through the week. It's okay. And so I'm like, no, no school tomorrow. Like, real confident. Like, he was sure of it. Like, he knew his game plan. And was like, no, I'm telling you, we're not going to school tomorrow. So we would wake up in the morning, and he would seem fine. And then it's like, he would go to school for like an hour and a half, and I would get a call. And it would be like, hey, I have King here at the nurse's office, and his eye is really swollen. And I'll be like, this little boy. And then I would literally have to go pick him up because the nurse would not let him stay at school with his eyes swollen. So then he'll come home and boom, eyes swelling has gone down. He hasn't touched his eye at all and he was perfectly fine. So that became like a reoccurring thing at the end of the school year. Like the last three months were like, we couldn't get a full week of school in because he was always getting sick because somebody else was sick. One time, uh, somebody tested positive for COVID. They didn't even tell me that that happened. And then two days later, he was sick. And and then um, they say, oh yeah, well someone in his class tested positive. So, you know, he has to stay home for the week. So it was like constantly, like we were never getting a full week of school in to the point that I'm like, you know what? We're gonna do school at home today because you think you're slick and you're gonna get out of doing school. So it became like, well, I'm already practically homeschooling him. You know, I would tell his teacher, like, pack us up a packet of work to do. And we would do it, and it was like I'm homeschooling him. So it was like, well, what are we doing? And one day, my husband jokingly asked him, well, do you want to go to school with Miss, you know, his teacher? and then, Or do you want to stay home and do school with Mommy? And his response was like, yeah, stay home and do school with mommy. And like that was a joke. It started off as a joke at least. And when my husband said that, it kind of made me think like, maybe that would be a better idea because we would have school all the time and like he wouldn't be able to get out of it. And then it was like the last few weeks of school were really, really hard for him to get through. He did not want to go to school. His teacher ended up telling me like he was being like he was acting out he would push the chair and he was like scratching the teacher like things that I've never he is not a like mad kid he is always happy he's very very kind and so it was like well what's happening at school that he doesn't that he's acting this way and no one could even really give us an answer <laughs> so that was frustrating you know and when those things kind of happened it was like I don't know maybe god just put it in my heart to just like no homeschooling is better it's gonna he is gonna get the most out of it and and i do i truly feel like i become so excited to homeschool i do have um you know curriculums that i have looked through and done my research and i already know what we're gonna do this school year and that will be probably our next video or sometime next month um, I'll have that video out, but it was just real prevalent that, like, the school setting is not for him. Um, especially, like I said, he was just learning things with ease. Like, his memory is great. He does math, no issue. First grade math, he does first grade reading, no issue. So it was like he wasn't getting pushed to the limit that he could. And that was kind of making school boring for him. And also he just wasn't getting the best education, I feel like. He was doing classwork that maybe his other classmates may have struggled with and they're doing it as a class. But it wasn't fair to him who already understood these things and is ready to get to the next level. And he couldn't. Um, 
so it's like why not why not at least try it so that had that sentence alone was what carried me to the decision of doing it from just joking of like you want to do school with mommy like no maybe we should because one he's only going in first grade two i have two little ones that i'm already homeschooling so my main sentence that really just tugged at my heart was at least try it because one what's what bad can come out of it and two this might really be what he needs so it's like let's explore and if it doesn't work or if it's too much for me to handle um with three kids it's like at least i tried it and i i explored that option for him i was fair enough to try it for him to see if he did well with homeschooling if he um needs maybe more help than i can give him but i he's just growing to talk more and more each week that i'm like i don't think that's the issue so for me it was at least try it for one school year shoot even half the school year and if it doesn't work you can always put him back into school it's never like a life decision that like i'm taking you out of school and you can never go back like no if it doesn't work even if we homeschooled for first and second grade and third grade he's talking and he's all caught up and he's ready to go to a public school and he decides he wants to hey mommy i want to go to big kid school then i will explore that option for him as well as well as my other two when my middle one prosper gets ready to go into kindergarten which is not for another two years with his where his birthday falls so that if he is ready to go to school at that time i'm not holding anybody hostage if you guys want to go to school then you know they can go but for me right now it was at least let's try for him to get maybe what he needs or find other resources for him that can help him with his social skills because academic that's not our issue he's super smart academically he loves school our issue was life experiencing life you're not doing that sitting in a room for eight hours i want you to go out and probably make a friend at the trampoline park when we go in the morning time and it's quieter for him and he can pay attention to someone and maybe potentially make a friend there i want you to make your breakfast and not make his breakfast he's five but he likes to like learn how to wash dishes so it's like i want you to experience those things and getting yourself dressed where he still has trouble with that he has trouble with like fine motor skills and buttons and so it's like i can take time to do these things with him instead of getting him dressed in the morning super quick and pushing him out to the bus and then sitting in the classroom for eight hours and then coming home and know nothing about his whole entire day i wanted to take slow it down i feel like our society our world our generation is just always on go 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 and it's really fast and i just wanted to slow it down for him and let him be in moments and experience moments not just be in it and let it all it's all happening around him because that's how it is we can all be sitting as a family and he can be in his own world and we're all interacting with each other and he's not so that for me was our decision making process was like i want him to really experience things and understand things and not just keep moving along and going like i want him to really soak in those moments and learn how to get himself dressed and figure out how to button his jeans and tie his shoes um so for us that ultimately was our way of deciding is to at least try to do this if it doesn't work it doesn't work but at least i can say i tried to do it to see if that was what was best for him but no hey the public school was better for him he gets more help there um maybe i, I don't know i don't see that happening but you know like i said if in two years he decides he wants to go to school because he's all caught up he's talking and everything's fine then by all means he can go but right now i really truly felt like trying to give him more was the ultimate factor of why we decided to homeschool on top of dealing with autism um 
the one on one help will probably just help him thrive 50 times more than what he did this school year which he grew so much his kindergarten school year but I really truly believe that this school year will be life changing for him if not for me at least to learn about my son learn how he learns experience things with him let him experience things with his little siblings to gain those memories because they don't interact together very often um, I mean more now but he like he rather be alone and do things alone so to give him those experiences it's priceless so i rather try which is our main word here is to try it at least for our family we felt that that was best not all families feel the same to each his own that's the beauty of homeschooling everybody does things the way they want to for their kids individually because even each kid learns differently so ultimately that was like my whole ramble of why we got here and that's it i'm excited so 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 excited for the school year um and i will be ordering all of my curriculum very soon i had to really really decide because homeschool curriculum world is like its own headache because there's so much out there so it's like really finding what works best with your kid so i have come down to what i wanted what we're gonna try it might change a few months into the school year because it might be like hey he's not liking it try something new so that'll be another video i know this video is like i'm already looking at 30 minutes here so i'm sorry that it's so long but i really wanted to share um and welcome you into our homeschooling journey Please give this a thumbs up if you guys are excited to see more homeschooling videos. Um, leave some comments down below of things you want to see, our curriculums, how I plan on using them. Maybe curriculums for my preschooler and my pre k -er. I don't know. But I will have videos coming very soon for all those things. I just wanted to sit down and take time to share why we even decided to homeschool. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that's it. I'll see you guys in the next video and thank you for watching. Bye.